For a very long time, young people in Zimbabwe have been learning a variety of skills which are relevant to their particular trade. Every day, as the sun silhouettes the streets of Harare, young people have to adapt to the tricks of the trade so that they remain relevant to the prevailing environment. The nature of our everyday lives involves an element of passing on and transfer of knowledge from one another. This act can be traced back to the biblical times when the prophet Elijah mentored the prophet Elisha where the former passed on a double portion of his anointing to Elisha. Today, societies, though at times unaware, continue with the practice which can be universally described as mentoring. My first mentors, without question, were my parents, my, my father and my mother. At a very turbulent time of being a black person, moved from Africa to America and made their presence felt in a completely different continent. I think that's phenomenal. Mentorship to me is the responsibility which one has to give guidance to young people to become responsible for their own destiny. Uh, it's, it's one wants to go ahead and forge ahead. One is supposed to look up to people that can inspire them, that can uh, give them that uh, motivation to, to see that uh, anything is possible. Well, I genuinely believe that uh, if, if we don't have the past, passing on of the button, uh, you know, we, we then have an extension of best practices in the past. It's, it's like teaching when you when, when you when you see oh you are you are a former player. There are skills that you, you acquired while you are playing, and you need to plan back. Mentorship can make a difference in a young person's lives. Having a mentor can increase a person's self-confidence and enhance his ability to overcome obstacles, make decisions, and realize his goals. I became politically active at a very young age and I would consider some of the older nationalist politicians I had a chance to interact with as some of my mentors. And in business I had the opportunity to meet with a number of the early generation of uh, indigenous business people as well as some of the more world-wise international business leaders, all of whom impacted invaluable skills too. I remember in, uh, in 1985 I met some women, very formidable women, in The Hague. I went there as a young leader at a conference that I had been uh, asked to represent Zimbabwe. I was uh, in my early 20s and I met women like uh, Dr. Esther Oklu from Ghana, Beth Mugo from Kenya, who were very formidable women who I, I, I said to myself I would want to be, I want to be like them in my in my in my life, and uh, I got a lot of inspiration. When when my father turned seventy years old, and I think this is actually the African way of doing things. When he turned seventy, he he made it very clear that it was not necessary for him to engage anymore in any debates that it that had a clear focus on the future. What was critical was for him actually to pass on the knowledge that he had actually learned way, way before, so that at least we can be better equipped. So my entire childhood would actually sit around the diary, the ancient learning. And you would be asked to participate actively in any of the deliberations that the community was going through. And for me, that became a clear-cut case that you actually need to have knowledge transfer from the old to the young. Interestingly, the practice of mentoring is a two-way process which denotes both giving out knowledge as well as the teacher learning from their student. Even the older generation has got a lot to learn from, from the younger generation. I was taught uh, 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 the electronic uh, uh, business uh, way of doing things by my own son. The, 
what we call the before computers generation, like me, will find or will struggle to understand how computers work compared to the youngsters who grow up among those items. Those are some of the challenges. And you can't mentor such children with skills that you don't have. Young people face a myriad of challenges in their quest to effectively achieve set goals and objectives, hence a need for a comprehensive overhaul in skills transfer where mentoring principles can facilitate platforms where established leaders transfer vital knowledge to aspiring young leaders and advancing the skills of those who will succeed them. I always wonder what is it that makes our politicians be 80 years old, 85 years old, and still want to, to cling on to power. Whereas we know that by now you would actually be doing that transference of knowledge. Imitation is an important way of acquiring skills. Just by copying the things you admire or things you like to, to do in life, uh, that alone ex, uh, gives you access to skills that you, you didn't have before. The aspect of integrity, I've learned that from a number of mentors that I've, been, I've, I've looked up to. I think that uh, the art of being uh, knowledgeable, uh, knowing and understanding where you are going, uh, the issues of understanding goal setting, because you find that a lot of people that I've looked up to are people that knew exactly where they were going, what they wanted. In a partnership, it cannot be constructed by the input of only the one party and the other is in making a contribution. So both the younger generation and the older generation need to find time for each other and need to spend time with each other. I don't believe there's a substitute for a direct interaction. Uh, spending 10 minutes, 2 hours, uh, 1 week in the same place at the same time as the person who is mentoring you, I think is the most effective and still the best method of imparting skills. However, with less interaction, fueled mostly by the generation gap, there have not been enough platforms for sharing of this knowledge. There are too many other things happening in life that distract us. We think we are too busy to spend time with each other. We just have to have enough discipline in that 24-hour day to reserve an hour, half an hour, two hours in a week to interact between the mentor and the mentee. The biggest challenge for that lack of that transference also lies with the youths themselves. And I'm actually happy that actually this conference is about the youths. We have stopped having youths that come in to challenge the, old gen the older generation to sit down with them and actually say, look, how did you start this? What advice can you possibly give me? Instead, maybe because there's been very little documentation in terms of the achievement process itself, so maybe the youth are not able to Google and actually say to themselves, ah, this is how I want to do it. I find that the more curious you are, the more you learn. You know, like for me, I'm an avid reader. I need anything. I'll read books from Okoyo, from who, because I love just, you know, seeing how another person's mind is, 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 uh, is operating. What you want to do as a young person, you want to have a nose for knowledge. You want to be looking at 10 people. I like the way this person speaks. I like the way that person makes presentations. Jeez, I like the way that person leads people. I like the way, and then you gotta be insatiable in the, in, in the journal, in the Wall Street Journal, in the Times, or business section, or anywhere. Reading voraciously, because there's, there's a tip everywhere. And you're all, everyone is a teacher. Everyone is a teacher. I mean, it is, you cannot hook on to making yourself somebody else. You want to make yourself an amalgamation of the best ideas you can put together with your personality and your style that makes you comfortable in your own shoes. The recent advancement in technology is an opportunity to increase interaction as various tools offered by information communication technologies can eliminate challenges brought about by distance as mentors and mentees can easily get in touch at the tip of their fingertips. This is what... 